Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I am Conrad, that is Jack, and this is The 45 with a week 16 best guess. Thus far, uh, I am almost back to 500. I'm proud. You are significantly over 500. And of course, this is the week we choose to do all 10 matches, which means I will drop well below Or maybe I will. Maybe, maybe you'll have a good weekend. Maybe I'll struggle. I'm hoping that it goes better for you. Let's put it that way. Well, I think we're going to be, I think we're fairly aligned on some mm-hmm. of these as we went through the predictions. Um, there's some pretty clear cut matches this weekend. The highlight, obviously, the Manchester Derby between City and United at the Etihad. Uh, but before we get into the predictions, we want to take a quick look at the table. It's a good news, bad news kind of story. The good news for everybody in uh, sixth to 18th is they are separated by a scant seven points. So two wins, two losses, and everything's exactly, upside down. Yeah, and that's the big thing is if you're at the bottom, if you're Everton Football Club, you're saying, well, hey, two wins, and we are back in the middle of things. They just fired their manager, obviously, very recently. Um, and so they're thinking that maybe they can make a positive change forward. And if you're Manchester United, maybe there's a bit of extra pressure on you because you say, well, if we start to maybe struggle, slip up a little bit, um, then all of a sudden you're, you're right on the back burner. That's one of the downsides of that. And then conversely, the top five separated by 20 points. Four, five, six weeks ago, I don't think we uh, would have expected Wolves to be here after the – they didn't lose a lot. They just drew every match, it seems like. And they've already played, what did we say, 20 28 matches, matches so far this season. Total? Because they started their Europa League campaign back in July. So they've been exhausted already yeah. and headed into the holiday fixture list. It's going to be tough for them to try and keep those legs moving quickly. Um, but they're – going to be happy with the point total they're at right now. 23 is very good considering the, the stresses on the squad right now. Yep. Halfway to safety. safety. Exactly. That's, That's the best way to think about it. All right. Speaking of Everton, uh, they are home to Chelsea, having just sacked Marco Silva, to no surprise to anyone. Bournemouth, Liverpool, Spurs, Burnley, Watford, Crystal Palace, and Man City, Man United round out the Saturday matches. Starting off with Everton, they've lost eight of their last 11. Uh, They are now 18th, solidly in the relegation zone. Chelsea, meanwhile, picking up another win after a little bit of a blip in their unexpectedly good form for the season. Fourth place, 29 points. Yeah, definitely. I think that Everton firing Marco Silva was the right move. I don't think he's necessarily a bad manager. It's just things were not going right, and they were in a cycle of struggling. And we mentioned it in that managerial episode is that if you're able to make this move now and you're able to capitalize on some good form and get back into the race, you need to do it now. And the man, the upper brass of Everton obviously believed that Marco Silva was not the guy in order to get you in that good form because this was is the crucial time in the season. If Everton can pick up some good wins, they're back into a Europa League chase possibly, which is crazy to think about considering they're in 18th place. Seven, po- seven, seven points off the seven Europa points League. Of the Europa League. And I don't think we have much faith for them in this match, but... This they, hopefully they show signs of life. I think I have a bit more faith in the amount of life they'll show than you do. I think Chelsea's going to come out and just yeah. crush them. I mean, yes, it's at Goodison Park. Maybe they get a little bit. I just don't know how the home fans are going to react because the first match coming back after firing mm-hmm. Silva didn't go well for Everton. But you know, I yeah, I don't see this going well for Everton exactly, at all. Yeah. Bournemouth home to the league high flyers Liverpool. Bournemouth 14th point, excuse me, 14th place on 16 points. Liverpool clear, uh, clearly ahead, eight points ahead of Leicester in second at 43 points. First place for Liverpool. Uh, Bournemouth losing four matches in a row. Liverpool club record, 32 straight games without mm-hmm. a loss. Klopp's 100th victory just recently over Everton in midweek. Um, I don't see this one as being all that competitive. Bournemouth struggles scoring. Liverpool don't. Yeah, that's the big thing. Is Liverpool surprised a lot of people, me especially, when they announced that their front three was Sadio Mane, Divock Origi, and uh, Jordan Shakiri. And I think that Divock's obviously the Everton destroyer. I know that. Um, but at the same time, Club you, you didn't expect them to start that front three. And they did that, and that means that you have rest for Mohamed Salah, and you got a good solid chunk of rest for Roberto Firmino. So that means I think they're going to run that front three yet again uh, against Bournemouth, and I think that Mohamed Salah is going to be pretty big in this game. He loves the matches. Uh, he's he's obviously great in big games as well, not to say he's a small game player, but he loves matches against Watford, against Bournemouth. I think he's going to pick up one or two, maybe even a hat trick, uh, and, and take Liverpool, I think, pretty even further clear, um, pending other results elsewhere. Salah has scored in all four matches against Bournemouth thus far. 
his career against exactly. them. He's the only team he's 100% against, according to Premier League.com. 3 0 3 0, not a surprise here. Although, this could be a trap game. You never could know. Be. I think that. But I, don't, I think Klopp has them pretty late. And pretty you mentioned locked. it. They struggle scoring Bournemouth, too. So I think Liverpool are going to be able to attack from the top, uh, keep that def- keep them pressed in. I think that Liverpool will get a clean sheet that's much needed for them, uh, as I believe Allison's coming back from his suspension. I believe that's correct, also. Tot Burr got Spurs home to Burnley. Mourinho looking for a bounce back after losing to old club Man United. Bit of a surprise there. United played very, very well. Um, but. Uh, Tottenham, 8th place, 20 points. Burnley, 12th place, 18 points. There's that tightness again. Four, you know, four places in the table, two points exactly. overall. Uh, last time out, Burnley beat Spurs 2-1 at Turf Moor in February, which you could argue was what triggered Tottenham's real poor run yeah, of form. Yeah, you mentioned that Who before knows? we started recording, is that they started that run of form, that bad run of form for Pochettino, which eventually led to him losing his job, and now it's a different man at the helm uh, the next time these two teams play. And it's going to be interesting to see how they decide to uh, react from that loss against Manchester United. Um, I think they'll do well. You think they'll do well. Um, just a case of can they be better defensively because they've struggled a bit in that facet. They conceded two goals uh, in now, I believe, three straight matches under Mourinho, maybe even four. Um, that's correct. No, yeah, that's yeah, right. And that's just not Mourinho. He'll, he'll be frustrated with that. He'll he want to work on that. He has some talent back there. He's got to get the organizational structure a bit stronger. And I think they'll do well. I, I'm a bit more skeptical of whether they can keep a clean sheet just yet, but we both believe that they can do pretty well against Burnley. I don't see this one being all that competitive. You're correct in the two goals in each of the last three league games, and twice those were from 3-0 advantages for, for yeah. United. Or excuse me, for Liverpool. <laughs> for Spurs. I'll get it right one of these times. At least United, I had a legitimate excuse because he used to yeah. coach there. Two, so, so far, we're in agreement on all three of these. Uh, Watford and Palace. Managerless Watford. Um, looking for their second win of the season. They've got a run of three straight losses. Palace have bounced back. They had three defeats uh, back in November. They've won their last two to move up into seventh place on 21 points. Obviously, Watford rooted to the bottom of the table, where I believe they will remain for the rest of the year. 20th place on eight points. Yeah, that's... It's tough to make an argument for Watford getting a result against any Premier League opposition, but I think they have a solid chance, as a matter of fact. Uh, I think that it's going to be a case of do the, can the players show up and prove that they can do their jobs, because it's only so far that a manager can take them. And you, Kiko Sanchez-Flores could not go on the field and stop runs from the forwards. He could not go out there and score goals for them. And yeah, his system was wrong and his tactics were incorrect and his selections were probably a bit wrong, but at the same time, the players need to step up. I think this is going to be a kick in in the butt for them. They're going to have that home match. This is against a reasonable opposition. And they'll be able to pull up with an okay result, a 2-2 draw, which gets you a point. And it makes you feel a little bit better uh, as you head into a really tough December fixture list. No goals. It was 2-0. City and United, the big match of the weekend, the Manchester Derby. City obviously sitting third on 32 points. United sixth on 21 points. Uh, we talked about this in the, one of the previous shows. Last year, City dropped 16 points all season. And this year, they've already dropped 13 points in the first yeah. 15 matches of the season. United looking to seal their first back-to-back league wins for the first time since March. That's crazy. At the That's end. crazy. And I think that United are, we've talked about it before we started recording, they're very good against bigger opposition, but they struggle against smaller minnows, which is kind of crazy to think about, but it makes you think back to older Jurgen Klopp sides, where they were struggling against teams that are, I guess, below yep. their stature, but they were able to show up for the big matches, and I think that's a good foundation to be at, because you're not getting swept away by talented teams, but you're, and you're able to be competitive in them, and if you're able to be more consistent, then your club's going to be better off. Whether or not they can get a result here, I'm highly skeptical. Skeptical. It's at home for City. They're going to need these points because at, if they want to keep the chase on Liverpool, we believe that Liverpool are going to win their game. They need to get this win. And and in my opinion, that's, that's going to be what's going to get them over the edge. Um, they're going to be good defensively in my eyes. I think they're going to be able to keep United penned in. And I think it's going to be a bit of a just to get it over the line. We we're back-to-back champions for a reason, and we need these three points. Um, United are going to show up, and they're not going to make it easy for them. But I think at the end of the day, I think it's going to be a late winner for City that's going to take it for them. 
So that's I've got it down as a draw. Jack's got it as a win for City. Uh, moving on to the Sunday matches, we've got Villa Leicester, Newcastle, Southampton, Norwich, Sheffield United, and Brighton, home to Wolves. This is an interesting matchup, Villa and Leicester. Uh, Villa 16th on 15 points. They've Jack Grealish has been unbelievable for the last mm-hmm. few matches, uh, just playing out of his mind. Leicester second on 35 points, eight points adrift of Liverpool needing to pull the full three in order to keep pace. Um, Leicester have won their last seven games in a row, and Vardy has scored in each one of those matches. Meanwhile, Villa have only one win in their last six, including four draws, so that's not all bad. Exactly, yeah. I think Villa are in an okay position. They're beginning to show up a little bit, and it's something that I've noticed on Twitter is that an opposition fan will always make that tweet, man, we just made Jack Grealish look like prime Zinedine Zidane in that midfield, something like that. And it's happened in several consecutive matches, and it makes you wonder, is Jack Grealish just performing well against all these clubs, or is he actually just being shown that he's good because the opposition are playing poorly? And I think it's because he's actually been playing very well. And they have John McGinn playing uh, in a good run of form as well. They have Wesley as well up top as a guy who they want to get more out of. And they have a lot of good pieces in this squad. And this is a trap game for Leicester in my eyes. I think Rodgers is, there's no doubt that he's going to have a bit of thought in the back of his mind. He said, I don't want to leave Leicester. But there's no doubt there's going to be a little bit of a thought. Man, what if I could go back to a top six club, get another chance at that Premier League title that it was so elusive at Liverpool? I don't know if he's going to make that move. He shouldn't make that move in my He should not make that move in my eyes. But that might be a little bit in his head, and it might lead to a bit of distraction and a bit of a slip-up for Leicester in my eyes. I don't disagree on the potential wanderlust that he may have, but I agree he should stay there. And he was quoted in the press just today or yesterday saying, hey, we make European competition. Players are going to mm-hmm. want to come play here. So he thinks he's going to be able to build that into a legacy club you know, that can maintain a position in the top four, top six over time remains to be seen. But the job that he's done thus far has been nothing short of exactly. remarkable. So here we are. We're on a clear opposite sides of the, of the spectrum on this one. I've got it 2-1 down to Leicester. I do agree it's a bit of could be a trap game for Leicester. Um, we'll see how that mm-hmm. shakes out. But should be an interesting. This is one of the more interesting matchups of the it weekend. Is. Moving to uh, Newcastle and Southampton. Newcastle, 11th place on 19 points. They've played quite well in the last couple of matches. Southampton, 17th point place on 15 points. Um, Southampton have won their last two to get out of the relegation zone. Um, and Newcastle have beaten Newcastle. Excuse me. Newcastle has beaten Southampton 13 times out of 36 matches and only one time away from home. So it's an interesting, probably meaningless yeah. statistic in the, in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. But I don't expect Sheffield, excuse me, Southampton to put mm-hmm. up much. Yeah, I think that the big thing here is Newcastle are performing very well. I read a couple of weeks ago an article in The Athletic. It was about uh, Steve Bruce and how difficult a job it is to replace Rafa Benitez as a Champions League winner and winning over the fans because he's a boyhood uh, fan and player, if I'm not mistaken, of Newcastle uh, as well as playing at Manchester United. And he was frustrated that he was not able to win over the fans immediately because they had that love it manager and Rafa Benitez who left because of the ownership and now he's kind of viewed in a lesser light because he has to replace him and what he said in that interview was I need to get better results and the fans will come around because what are they going to do are they always going to cry out for Rafa Benitez and what he's shown is that they're having a bit of a good run of form they're beginning to keep clean sheets they beat Sheffield United uh, that might have been the cause of your little slip up there because they beat them in the last match 2-0 uh, and they're performing very well, and I think that Newcastle have a lot of reason to be very excited, and we both are very excited about the direction they're going under Steve Bruce, as we both see clean sheets and a win over a struggling Southampton side. May not even be that close, who knows? Exactly, yeah. Norwich and Sheffield United. Norwich in the bottom three, 19th on 11 points. Sheffield United, ninth on 19 points, as we mentioned. That's a blip for them. Uh, Norwich have won win in their last 10 league matches Uh, meanwhile this is an interesting one Sheffield United the only team alongside Liverpool to be undefeated in their last six matches now (laughs) that's one win and six draws excuse me seven matches on the road one win six draws versus Liverpool six wins one draw I I, I Uh, started a little bit when I saw that statistic because obviously you're undefeated but it was seven points from seven matches. Or it's not seven points. It was nine points <laughs> from seven matches. Um, it's good. It's good haul. It proves that you're not losing on the road. And I think this is a match where they will find it a bit easier. 
uh, against Norwich, and um, it, it should be. I don't want to say it's going to be easy because there's no easy Premier League match that exists the most in all likelihood. Um, but it's going to be 2-0. You see it in a 1-0 for me. It looks like it's one minus in here. I failed to put the zero in there, so I don't know what that says about my subliminal thoughts about it. No, I, mean, no, it's just, I don't think they have uh, too they much don't. of a chance in this match in my eyes. No, I don't think so. Uh, yeah, they're, again, they are bitten by the injury bug. They got a shot at getting out of the relegation zone just given how tight mm-hmm. it is. Um, but And again, this is one of those huge yeah. results. If you get in a good run, you're able to get back up. And that's the same thing for both these sides right here for Brighton and Wolves. They're both on opposite ends of that spectrum. If you're able to get hot, it's a huge deal. If you if you get cold or if you get to struggle a little bit, maybe you get a couple of key injuries to your, some of your best players, things could fall apart in an instant. And that's going to give yeah. optimism for Norwich. Maybe even Watford will say, if we manage to miraculously win a few games, <laughs> maybe add some more Ws to the beginning of our name, uh, that would be a big Whoa, uh, Watford. Exactly. The Brighton... As you mentioned, 13th place, 18 points. Wolves all the way up to 5th on 23. That's largely in part to a 10-match unbeaten yeah. run. Five wins, five draws. Meanwhile, Brighton are on a three-match losing streak, uh, just a point above the drop zone. And as we said, Wolves have played mm-hmm. 28 matches this season, far more than any other team in the yeah, league. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's one of the big things. And Brighton coming off of that huge win over uh, Arsenal in that last game, uh, today, as a matter of fact, it was a surprising win at the Emirates, their first time ever, I want to say, uh, beating Arsenal. Um, and uh, it's going to be interesting to see how they handle this match against Wolves because it's coming off of that big result. Um, but I almost think that this is going to be an interesting situation because Wolves are used to that Thursday-Sunday travel and that turnaround. It's done it five times already. Uh, maybe even more for qualifiers. I may be wrong on that as well. And... Brighton may be a little slow, maybe a little sluggish at home. And I think that Wolves could capitalize on that. We both see them scoring some goals, uh, maybe conceding a few, but they'll come away with the win in both of our eyes. And finally, the Monday match, the very confusing, both of these sides are very confusing this season. Uh, Hammers 15th, points, points on, 15th mm-hmm. place on 16 points. Arsenal 10th on 19 points. Um, Arsenal have not won, you said this early on, in... Two and a half months. Two and a half months. Two and a half months. Um, meanwhile, West Ham have lost six out of their last ten. Pellegrini under a bit of pressure. Um, I don't... This one, again, we're split on this one. It's another London derby. Arsenal, that Brighton win, not, not as big as it would be in ordinary mm-hmm. years where you have a very good Arsenal side. Obviously, they're very wounded. Their confidence is in the mm-hmm. toilet. Um, but... Look, we both talk about how difficult it is to predict these teams. I mean, what, what more difficult a match could it be than these two sides? They're both so inconsistent with how they perform. I mean, Newcastle obviously, uh, or not Newcastle, excuse me, West Ham in their last match, losing to Wolves 2-0. And the match before that, they beat Chelsea 1-0 at Stamford Bridge. And so you wonder, which t- side is going to show up? The one who which team? one was clinical yep. and the one who can defend well or the one who's just sloppy at the back and is not able to create a ton of chances and waste that talent that they have? And... Honestly, it's such a difficult match to call, and we talk about how finicky Arsenal fans are all the time. We say they don't, they're they're very quick to jump on a manager, and they're very quick to go against the players, and I think that's very true right now, because they wanted Emery gone very badly. They were saying it's him, it's it's the tactics that he's doing, and I don't think there's any reason to say that his tactics were correct. I think there was a lot of mistakes in the way he did his tactics, but at the same time, the players are the only consistent factor from Wenger to Emery, now to Lundberg. And they're still performing poorly. And you got to question, when is it their fault that they are not up to the standard? I think this is going to be a match where Nicolas Pepe, who's been a flop so far, there's no other word to describe it, is going to step up big. Um, I think he's going to be able to start. I think he's going to be able to perform very well. And I think that he's going to get two goals. And I think it's going to be a bombing as well. My very precise prediction of 3-1. Uh, this is a much-needed win for Arsenal if they can get it. And same for West Ham. This is as big a match in December as you'll probably get for these two sides. Yeah, I this one was really, really tough. I'd like to see Arsenal win just simply because they need mm-hmm. it, but I could not bring myself to And, to I mean, if, if West Ham win in this match, they'd go level with Arsenal on goal difference. They'd be behind them on goal difference. But that shows you how close it is. And West Ham are all the way down in 15th, Arsenal are in 10th. And you would attach yourself to your London rivals that quickly with a big result there. Well, that does it for our hopeful picks 
for week 16 of the Premier League schedule, rapidly approaching mid-season, and we'll see how the festive fixtures shake out. Sure to see this table go upside down again with just those seven points separating 6th and 18th. It's going to be exciting to see in this, this packed amount of fixtures. Looking at the table where it is now and a month from now, it could be literally upside down inverted. It, it, it could be crazy. Find us on the Twitter at the 45. Please like, comment, subscribe for Jack Conrad. This has been the 45. Take care now.